Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please let me know. Hello everyone, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please let me know. Good evening everyone, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys? No issues? That's great. So how was your day guys? Do let me know. How was your day guys? How was your day guys? Was it a good day? A great day? Amazing day? A productive day? Do let me know. <coughs> a good day? A productive day? That's good guys. That's good. Okay. So Try to make sure that you guys are able to learn as much as possible. Okay. And uh, just focus upon your studies itself. How was your health? So my health is not that good. I am having a lot of fever right now. And a lot of body pain. But I think so. I am taking up the medicines guys. I think so. In a few days it would be uh, fine. So let's see how that goes on. Okay. Uh, good guys. Amazing. Okay, so can you guys let me know what have you studied in our last class? The last class that happened, what have you studied in that? Could you guys let me know? <coughs> we have studied about functions, we have studied about return statements. Okay, we have studied about gifting in a function. We have studied about returning something from a function itself. Good guys. Anything else? Arguments, parameters, good. So parameter, okay. Anything else guys? Anything else that we have studied in our last class? Please let me know. Anything else that we have studied in our last class guys, please let me know. All good. Okay, great. So, uh, in today's class, we are going to start off with the basics of backend web development guys. We'll first try to understand what is backend development. Then we'll try to understand what are the different technologies that we are going to use inside of it. And then what is the use of that particular technology? These are the three things that we will be uh, trying to understand right over here guys. Will that be fine? Please let me know. There are three things that we'll try to understand in this particular class. Please let me know. <coughs> okay, great. So let's get started right away guys. Let's get started right away. Let me open up this live chat right over here and paint right over here. Let me open this up on the left hand side and paint on the right hand side. Follow. Okay, let's first try to understand what is backend web development, guys. Very important question to answer because we are trying to learn backend. So, what is backend web development? Now, think about your website as a restaurant. Okay, think about your website as a restaurant itself, guys. So uh, everybody has been to a restaurant at any particular point of time, right guys? Please let me know. Everybody here in the live chat has gone to a uh, place to eat. That is a restaurant at any particular point of time, guys, please let me know. Great. So when you go into a restaurant as the user, you will be able to see when you enter into a restaurant, there will be tables, right? There'll be tables like this. There will be chairs like this. Okay. There'll be chairs like this. Then there will be some uh, decorations that will be there around all around. Okay. There will be some fans. Okay. There will be some fans. There will be some lightings as well. There will be some lightings right over here. Okay. There might be a carpet down below. Okay. A carpet that might be down below. So <coughs> this is a place where you go sit and eat guys. Okay. This is the place. Where you go, sit and eat guys. That is the concept of this particular uh, restaurant itself. The place where you are able to order food, where you are able to sit, where you are able to interact with stuff. That is called as the front end of the restaurant. Front end of the restaurant guys. Okay. 
similar to that when you are using a website whatever you are able to see on a website whatever you are able to interact with with a website itself all that is called as the front end of the website guys all that is called as the front end of the website are you guys able to understand it when you write www.google.com whatever stuff that you are able to see on your screen whether it be the search whether it be the logo of google whether it be the search button whether it be some text out on the screen all that is a part of the front end which is a particular place where uh, the user is able to interact with the website itself are you guys able to understand this please let me know <coughs> is everybody able to understand please let me know in the live chat guys good now uh, when you are sitting in the uh, restaurant itself so this is me sitting in the restaurant okay now uh, i'm ask i'm i'm going to order something okay i want to order something so does the food gets prepared in front of you at any particular point of time so there are two ways in doing that let's assume that i'm ordering a pizza okay i'm ordering a pizza the two ways in which the pizza can be made right guys it can be made on my table itself where they bring in all the uh, necessary ingredients that they require maybe some f l o u of flour maybe some uh, uh, oil okay uh, cheese uh, then you are having vegetables okay and so much different stuff that are there they bring all these ingredients to my table and then assemble the entire pizza in front of me create the entire sauce in front of me pour the sauce on the pizza and then heat it up and serve it to me right guys please let me know <coughs> please guys do let me know guys so in that particular case what is the loss the secret recipe the secret recipe of your that your restaurant had is now getting like everybody is able to see okay everybody is able to see the secret recipe that you guys are having to create a pizza now when they know the recipe they can go back home and recreate the exact same pizza in their home itself and they will stop coming to your restaurant and you don't want that right you don't want that to happen you want everything that is how to create the entire pizza to happen in such a place wherein the user is not able to see it that is the reason why most of the places have a concept called as kitchen okay most of the place have a concept called as kitchen guys <coughs> so inside of the kitchen itself you are having a stove okay there's some fire right over here okay then you are having some utensils on top of it okay you are having some storage unit right over here okay below you are having some plates or some utensils that you are storing right over here guys okay uh, along with that you are having a refrigerator as well okay a storage unit where you are able to store the ingredients Okay, where you are able to store the ingredients itself, and you are having one chef right over here that is preparing all your food for you. Okay, you are having a chef that is preparing all your food for you, right, guys? Please let me know. So this is called as the back end. Okay, back end of a restaurant. Why is this called as back end? Deepak Rajput, this is technical stuff itself. If you are not able to understand that this is technical stuff, then there's something very wrong with you. Okay, then you are not listening to me carefully. I'm making sure that you guys are able to understand what is front end and what is back end uh, in as simple manner as possible. Okay, because if I start speaking, huh, the back end is a place where you are able to write uh, code uh, that basically utilizes all your uh, functionalities that are happening in the front end. then you will be pissed off because you won't be able to understand what the fuck are am i talking about <laughs> okay so now at the back end the user who is in the front end this user that is there in the front end itself he is not able, able to see what is happening in the back end he is not able to enter the back end as well are you guys able to understand this please let me know the user who is coming to your restaurant to eat food he is not allowed to get into the restaurant uh, into the kitchen he is not allowed to peek into the kitchen as well he is not able to see how the pizza is being created now the secret uh, thing it says how to create the pizza the secret thing now remi still remains a secret it is only known by some people that work in the restaurant right 
by some people that work in the restaurant in a similar way the exact same thing okay the exact same thing happens in the case of your websites as well for example when you are uh, lo trying to log into a platform okay you put up your user id and your password now how does it basically check that this particular password is for that particular user id and how does it provide you the access to the platform all that happens in the back end your id and password is being sent to the kitchen okay that is the back end itself your id and password that you have uh, written right over there is sent to the back end in the back end the secret formula okay is how to check whether this password is for that particular id or not so your ingredients is basically the data of that website okay your ingredients is nothing else but the data for that particular website okay it is usually called as the database it is usually called as the database so your chef your backend that is your chef itself will basically check that for that particular id is the password correct or not using the data that he already had if it is correct then he will send the information back to the front end that okay you can access the website otherwise if it is not correct then you will just say that it is not uh, able to <coughs> access the website okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys Good. So the next thing that we have to focus upon is some technical concepts that happens between front end and back end. Okay. So you are having front end. Now your front end is nothing else but basically your website itself www.google.com. Okay. Then you are having your back end. That is basically your back end itself. So I'll just draw a gear like icon right over here. So uh, basically all your files as well. Okay. Let's try to understand how does the internet work? Okay. Let's first try to understand how does the internet work guys? So right over here, you are having a particular computer. Okay. You are having a particular computer itself and uh, your computer. So, uh, um, so basically guys, you guys uh, know that when you are connected to internet, okay. Uh, when you are typing this particular website, let's assume www.google.com www google.com so all the uh, devices may whether it is your phone whether it is your uh, laptop whether it is your computer all the phones all the devices that are connected to the internet across the entire world have a unique id that is an ip address associated with it are you guys able to understand this please let me know all your devices whether it be your phone whether it be your laptop computer anything Okay, all the devices throughout the entire world are connected to each other uh, through the internet itself. And uh, each of these devices have a particular unique ID called as the IP address. Okay, called as the IP address guys. Similar to that when you are writing www.google.com, there is an IP address associated with that domain as well. Okay, the domain is google.com. So there is an IP address associated with it. Now. We don't know what is this IP address. Okay. So what does happen is when you type www.google.com. Okay. So what happens is this particular request is being sent to the ISP internet service provider. ISP or the internet service provider guys. Okay. Internet service provider. This is like Jio, Airtel, uh, VI, uh, Vodafone idea, whatever uh, internet basically that you use. Okay. Whether it be, it be Airtel or Jio or something like that. That is basically your ISP or your internet service provider. Now these internet service provider have something called as DNS guys, domain name system. Okay. Domain name system. This domain name system is nothing else but a dictionary. Okay. <laughs> this domain name system is basically a dictionary itself. 
that contains okay that contains uh, your okay that basically contains your uh, domain okay that is google.com that is your domain okay domain is basically google.com and it's associated ip address okay and it's associated ip address guys that is what domain name system basically contains now you're, when you're typing www.google.com your browser sends a request to the internet service provider to provide it with the IP address associated with this particular website. Okay, what is the IP address of this particular website guys? Now once it is able to find the IP address using the DNS, this IP address is then sent back to your uh, browser. This IP address is then sent back to your browser guys. Once you are able to get the IP address, once you are able to get the IP address, then you send a request, okay? to that particular IP address. Like again, like I said, an IP address is associated with a particular device. So this IP address of google.com will also have a device associated with it. Right guys, please let me know. <coughs> this IP address will also have a device associated with it guys. Please let me know. They just jamkar, please just uh, scroll it back and listen to it once again. I can't, I've repeated it twice. I repeat everything twice. If you're still not able to understand, then I can't make you understand. That is the main point. You just uh, listen to it once again. If you want to just listen to it again itself. There's nothing else that I can do about it. So right over here, once you are able to get the IP address, okay. Once you are able to get the, this is your, again your computer. This is your IP address 255.255.255.255. Right over here. Okay, so you will be trying to connect. Okay, you will try to connect uh, to this particular IP address, guys. This IP address would be of some computer that is there somewhere all across the world. Okay, and we don't know where this computer is, but we know that this computer is owned by Google because this is the uh, IP address of Google.com. So this computer is owned by Google, guys. Now, please try to understand this that uh, although when you're sitting into your home itself, okay. Uh, although when you're sitting into your home itself, you guys can open up your mobile phone and think that, okay, your internet works wirelessly. Okay. You can sit in front of a Wi-Fi, open up your computer and you will be like, hey, my computer is not uh, connected to my Wi-Fi. That means internet is something that works without wires. Okay. But that is absolutely false. Okay. That is absolutely false. Basically when you're sending up a connection request between your computer and the computer of this particular IP address. It establishes a link to that particular computer using a wired connection itself. Using a wired connection itself, guys. So basically, your computer in India is connected to a computer in USA using a wire. Can you imagine that? Please do let me know. <coughs> Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know, guys. Your computer is connected to a computer at Google's headquarters in US using a wire itself. Now these wires, if I am able to show it to you guys, are 80% owned by Tata. Okay. So let me just try to find it. Ocean internet cables. So throughout the entire world guys, throughout the entire oceans itself, these type of wires are being put up. Okay. These type of wires are being put up inside of the ocean as you are able to see right over here. I can even show you guys all the wires that are there in the entire world itself. I think so. So you're right over here in this image as you're able to see all the wires that are there that connect throughout the entire world, maybe through land, maybe through ocean, you guys are able to see on your screen right now. Out of these cables that you are able to see 80% of it is owned by an Indian company that is Tata's company itself. Okay, so that is how powerful Tata is. If uh, it basically decides one day to close the internet of the entire world, it can do it within seconds. That is how powerful uh, Tata is right now. So as you're able to see all these uh, network of wires is basically used to connect your computer with the computer at Google's headquarters. Okay, that is how basically it works. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Uh, please let me know guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please do let me know guys. Yes, it is fiber optics itself. So right over here, once your computer is connected 
to this computer at Google. Now this computer at Google does not has any screen. Okay. This computer at Google does not has any SCRWEN screen. These type of computers are called as servers. Okay, these type of computers are called as servers, guys. Now, when you are going on the internet, you must have seen these servers in some English movies or something like that. Right? When you are going on uh, the uh, internet itself, um, looking at some movie, uh, you must have seen these type of images of servers just laid across in a particular place and the person is going there, connecting his computer and trying to hack the information out of it. Now, that is absolute bullshit, but right over here, this is what is referred to as a server, guys. Each of these box that you are able to see, okay, one box, one rectangle on the right hand side. Each of these boxes is basically a normal computer itself. It has its very own CPU, its very own GPU, its very own RAM. Everything is the same as a computer itself, except that it does not have a screen. Except that it does not have a screen, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know, guys. Good. Now these servers, okay, these servers is what you are connecting your computer with. Okay, these servers is what you are connecting your computer with. These servers contain your backend code. Your backend code lives on this server itself. Your database lives on the server itself. Okay, are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. All your backend code or your database lives on that particular server. Once uh, your web browser, your computer is able to establish a connection to this server itself, then it sends a request. Okay, you were searching for www.google.com. What is the backend uh, code? So your kitchen that you created that we are going to learn right now in this bootcamp, what you are going to learn that code lives on the server. We haven't learned it yet. The code that you write to create the backend, the kitchen of your website, that is what is called as a backend code. Okay. So right over here, uh, you are searching for google.com. Okay. That means you want to watch this particular website, right? And to get the files associated with this website, the HTML, CSS and the JavaScript file right over here. So what will happen is you will send a get request. Okay. You will send a get request for getting the files that is the HTML. CSS and JavaScript files so that you are able to see the website on your browser. Right now you have just connected your HTML, CSS and JavaScript file basically lives on the server itself. You have connected with the server. Now you require, you request, okay. You get a get request. You send a get request that dude, I want to get the HTML, CSS and JavaScript file associated with www.google.com. Your server will basically first see if that request is genuine or not. If there is any problem with that request, it will not cater to it. But if there is no problem, it's a genuine request then it will send back. Okay. It will say, so your server does not do this. Okay. Your server does not do this. Your backend code basically handles this. Your backend code gets a get request. It basically sees that, okay, everything is working fine. Now you know, the backend code will send a response. Okay. It will send a response back to your browser, which contains your HTML, CSS and your JavaScript code. Okay. Which sends your HTML, CSS and JavaScript code back to your website with your browser. Then your browser basically goes through your HTML, CSS and JavaScript code itself. Okay. And creates your website. Okay. And creates your website. Itself. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Uh, post method is good or get method is good. Both are used for different purposes. <laughs> both are used for different purposes. We'll be learning about both the methods in this particular bootcamp. You don't have to worry about it. So the most in demand, okay. The most in demand uh, frameworks that are there in the industry, the technical stuff are there in the industry for front end web development. Okay, for front end web development is react that has the most number of jobs, the most number of earnings, the higher package, everything that is there is for react itself. Okay. And for uh, backend web development for backend web development, 
the technical things that are there, the technologies that are there that, uh, as the most in demand, the most number of jobs are available, easier placements are available, more packages available. That is for Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. We are going to focus upon Node.js and Express in this bootcamp. Okay, we are going to focus upon Node.js and Express uh, for this bootcamp. Shara, sir, how come the data transfer of data is so quick? Is there any checkpoint stations? So Shashwat, basically what happens is you are using uh, optical fibers. In optical fibers, the transmission is very fast. That is the reason you are using it. You are not using just normal... <coughs> cables itself okay so your data gets transferred at the speed of light that is the reason why it is so fast good so we are going to focus upon node.js and express in this bootcamp guys now let us start by answering a very simple question why the fuck we were using okay uh, console and uh, sources To write our code okay we were using console and sources to write javascript up till this particular point of time right guys please let me know harris is node.js and express different to each other uh, if there are two names most probably yes they are different to each other we were using console and sources to write our javascript code up till this particular point of time right guys so why we were doing that why not directly open up some particular um, application in our computer and directly start using uh, JavaScript code itself. <coughs> so try to understand this guys. We okay, try to understand this right over here guys that uh, for example, this is your uh, computer. Okay, let's, let's do something else. Let's do something else. Let me make sure that you are able to understand this. Now, what, how would you feel? So JavaScript is basically a programming language, right? JavaScript is basically a programming language, right guys? And uh, JavaScript can work inside of the browser that we have already seen writing the code inside of console and uh, sources. JavaScript works inside of the browser guys. But what if it started working inside of your computer itself? What if it started working inside of your computer itself? In that particular case, any website from your browser will be able to use a JavaScript code to access files, access your personal history, access your data, access your all your passwords and everything for your computer. Because now JavaScript works both on the browser as well as your computer. Will that be fine with you guys? Please let me know. <coughs> will that be fine with you guys? Please let me know. No, not at all, right? Your all your passwords, all your pictures, videos, all your uh, stuff will get leaked on, on online itself. Everybody will be able to see it. All your private pictures that you guys are having, all the stuff, all the chatting that you are going to do with all your friends and everybody. Okay, everybody in the entire internet will be able to see it. That is how like bad it is. So you don't want JavaScript to work on your computer. If it works on your computer in that particular case, uh, your websites will be able to access all the data from your computer, even all your passwords as well. For example, all your password for your banking history uh, and they will be able to take, in, uh, take out money out of it as well. So all this will start happening and you don't want that. For that particular reason itself, let's try to understand it. But we want to code... Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, we want to code our... Uh, <coughs> um entire backend or a computer as well. Okay. There's a computer called as a server. We want to write all our backend code in JavaScript and put it out on the, uh, like on the computer itself. So how to do that? Okay. How to do that? So right over here. Let's assume that this is earth guys. This is earth. Okay. This is earth right over here. And this is the, uh, atmosphere around it. Okay. This is the atmosphere around it guys. Okay. Now you are having, okay. Now you are having. This is JavaScript guys, right over here. This is JavaScript. Okay, this is JavaScript right over here guys. Okay, so uh, your JavaScript is able to survive. Okay, your human is able to survive inside of this atmosphere, right guys? Please let me know. It can do anything inside of this particular atmosphere, right guys? Please let me know. This is your Earth. E-A-R-T-H, Earth. 
this is your atmosphere atm this is your human the human is able to do anything it is able to survive it is able to do anything inside of this atmosphere if i put this oh, human inside of space okay, this is space Okay, if I put this human inside of the space itself, he or she will die immediately, right guys? The human will die immediately, right guys? Please let me know. <coughs> and we don't want that. Let's assume the exact same thing for your JavaScript as well. Okay, for your JavaScript as well, guys. So this is your JavaScript. Okay, this is your JavaScript right over here. This is your JavaScript. Your JavaScript is able to survive inside of the browser. This is your browser. The JavaScript can do anything inside of the browser. It is able, it is able to survive inside of the browser. But as soon as that you make like bring the JavaScript outside the atmosphere, outside the browser into the computer, into the computer, JavaScript immediately dies. You are not able to use it, right guys? Please let me know. JavaScript immediately dies. You are not able to use it as soon as you are bringing it inside of the computer itself. So if you want your human to survive inside of the space, what would you do? If you want your human to survive inside of the space, guys, what would you do? Think about it. Space suit, right guys? Space suit is as simple as that. If you want your uh, human to survive inside of the space, you will design a space suit for him. So you'll put up a helmet right over here. You will arrange for the space suit right over here, right guys? So now your human will be able to survive inside of space as well. And this space suit also has some additional features to it, right guys? It has a backpack on the back that is able to provide you guys with a little bit of thrust to move around like a jetpack to move around inside of the space. You didn't have this kind of uh, thing available when you were in Earth. You didn't have any jetpack that you could use to fly around, right? But inside of space, you can use this jetpack to fly around as well. Some additional features are there. So similar to that, similar to that, to enable JavaScript, okay, to enable JavaScript itself to work inside of your computer as well, the space suit that you need, the space suit that you use is called as Node.js, guys. It's called as Node.js. That is the space suit that you will be using to make your uh, your JavaScript work inside of your computer as well. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. <coughs> Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys. Good. So this Node.js basically provides a entire environment to the JavaScript itself that enables JavaScript to work inside of the computer as well. Okay. But sir, you said that it will access the data. Uh, can some, can, uh, can you put your hand inside the spacesuit from outside? If I'm wearing the spacesuit, can you put your hand inside the spacesuit? No, right? So Node.js basically provides an environment. Okay. Node.js basically provides an environment to the user that is to JavaScript itself, wherein JavaScript is able to work inside very easily. And it also provides some additional features to JavaScript as well. Nothing from outside can enter into Node.js. Okay, nothing from your browser cannot enter into your Node.js. But your Node.js can exist inside of your computer itself. And that uh, Node.js is able to provide an entire arena for JavaScript to work as well as provide it with some extra features as well that was not provided to the JavaScript inside of the browser as well. <coughs> Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know guys, the use of Node.js. Are you guys able to understand the new uh, use of Node.js guys? Please let me know. Good guys, amazing. Okay, so right now what we are going to do is now that you have understood a little bit about Node.js will try to understand something about Express as well. Okay. We'll try to understand something about Express as well, guys. <coughs> so right over here, guys. So for example, when you're creating the uh, backend of a particular website, 
the please teach us how to correct mongodb with express maybe in the future artists uh, in this particular bootcamp will not be doing it in this particular bootcamp my focus will be on express and node js itself okay so right over here guys when you're creating the backend there's a lot of code that you have to write okay now that you have understood what is the use of node js we also need to understand what is the use of uh, express as well right so when you're creating the backend code when you're writing the back end code there's a lot of repeated stuff that you have to do for example your backend code is going to get a get request okay a get request is going to be sent to your backend code the backend code needs to handle that get request for you okay the backend code needs to handle that get request for you send a response right over here okay send a response right over here now doing that uh, using just your normal javascript it's going to create like somewhere around 500 to 600 lines of javascript code we are doing just this simple step to handle a get request and then to send a response back is going to take up at least 500 to 600 lines of javascript hardcore javascript code to be written to actually handle that and this is not something that you want to do right guys this is not something that you want to do at any particular point of time <coughs> so what happens is there is a particular thing called as a, a framework okay a framework that basically contains all these basic code already done inside of it okay so all this method of basically having a to handle a get request, sending a response, all that code has already been written inside of that framework that you can directly utilize in just one line of code. You have to write, write one line of code that basically does all this thing for you. That basically does all this thing for you. Just let's try to understand something guys. Why do we require a framework? Why do we require a framework guys? So how do you create a wall guys? Please do let me know. How do you create a wall guys do let me know you'll put up bricks right over here right guys you'll start laying down bricks then you will pour the cement in between and on top you'll pour the cement right over here and in between as well then again you will put up the bricks on top of it right guys you'll again put up the bricks on top of it so again you will be having the bricks right over here again you will pour in the cement in between them <coughs> and so on and so forth that is how you build a wall now although yes this is the correct way of building a wall but it is taking a lot of time from your uh, uh, behalf as well okay a lot of labor as well to create your wall if you want to create an entire building, then this is going to take up years to do it. Like one ball at a time, you will have to work and it will take you years to do it, guys. So this is a very slow process. Okay, a lot of hard work is required to do that. Now, what happens is what if you use a framework? Okay, what is a framework, guys? You put up, you want to create a wall, you put up two wooden planks right over here. You create create a frame, guys. You create a frame. You put up two wooden planks right over here. You enclose both the ends of this particular uh, plank. Okay, both these, uh, you just close it up. Okay, this is a framework, guys. This is a framework. Then you put up rods inside of it. Okay, you put up uh, iron rods inside of it, guys. Some iron rods right over here and here. Okay, once you put up the iron rods, you directly just pour in the cement till the top. You directly just pour in the cement till the top, guys. You let it cool down, you just remove the planks and done. One wall is ready for you. One wall is ready for you within a few days itself instead of it taking weeks to do that. So a framework basically provides you with all the necessary things that you need to do a particular task faster and easily, easy as well. Okay, faster and easily as well. For example, while creating backend, it will provide you all. So your Node J, sorry, your Express JS provides you with all the necessary tools, all the necessary things that you need to create a backend application itself very easily without having to code everything from the basics altogether. <coughs> Are you guys able to understand what is Express JS? Please do let me know. Are you guys able to understand everything? What is Express.js? Please let me know guys.
good guys so express js and node js is basically used simultaneously to make sure that your javascript code basically actually works and you are creating a backend application backend code it's a backend application itself that is able to handle all your requests and response for you okay and whatever business logic that you are having that is what uh, your entire thing is there and this is what we are going to learn in the upcoming classes as well okay we are going to learn this practically how is it helpful for us are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys <coughs> good now i will be sharing the attendance thing with you guys My health is not right, but you will be having classes every single day from now on. I'm taking up my medicines as well. There shouldn't be any issues. Additionally, guys, uh, those guys who are interested to attend some of our future boot camps as well. As we are able to see, there is two more boot camps in this particular month. That is hands-on cloud computing with AWS. Then learn DevOps for web development. And you're having JavaScript and React JS right away here. Then you are having Hotstar clone, okay, using HTML and CSS, backend web development using JavaScript, Node.js, and Express, web animation using uh, CSS. Then again, uh, hands-on cloud computing with AWS, DevOps, okay, web animation using JavaScript, and then Google Drive clone using HTML and CSS. So all that's so for those guys who want to learn something about cloud computing, DevOps, as well as uh, React JS and JavaScript, you can register yourself for the upcoming boot camps as well. You can register yourself for the upcoming boot camps from this particular website, guys. Because you are currently attending this particular boot camp, if you are not registering for the future boot camps, you will not be able to get the certificates. Okay, so I have provided you guys with the attendance link. Sorry, with the events link as well. If you want, you can register yourself for the upcoming boot camps using this particular link, guys. Okay. <clears throat> I will show you guys the attendance for today's class, guys. Okay, so I will be providing you guys the attendance thing in the live chat right now. Okay, this is the attendance thing for today's class, guys. Please start filling it up. The attendance thing will be closed at 8 uh, 18. Okay, at 8 18, the attendance thing will be closed, guys. At 8 18, the attendance thing will be closed. Set an alarm for 8 18. At 8.18 guys, the attendance link will be closed. Please start filling up the attendance link right now. We'll meet tomorrow again at 7.30 and then we'll continue our class from right over there. Thank you so much guys. Have a great day ahead. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys.